Hello, folks, and welcome to the Dark Roast Podcast, episode 23. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Jan Regense. I host the podcast. I'm here with a featured guest, Adam Plotzker. Welcome to the show, my guy. Hey, how's it going? My name's Adam. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. How are you doing today? How? For the audience. Just, uh, you know. <laughs> at, at Adam Beyond. Yeah, at Adam Beyond. At Adam my Beyond. YouTube channel. You yes. Check it out. Yes, check it out. Also, too, speaking of YouTube channel, we do want to get to know who you are. Okay. You know, so tell us a little bit more about yourself. I know you're going to get into the YouTube channel, too, so tell yeah, me more. Can, tell me more. We can, we can get into that. Uh, so my name's Adam. Uh, I work for a company, Big Tech. I, I went to mm-hmm. Rutgers University, lived in New Jersey my whole life. Um, Wait, before you get into what, uh, Newark or New Brunswick? I New Brunswick. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you go there too? Yeah, I did actually. Did stuff, but I think I graduated a little bit later, though. Okay. A little bit okay. Later. I graduated in seventeen. So. Oh, so I was a year after you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry. Continue. But uh, yeah, I work. I work in tech. Uh, worked in tech for, like my whole life, I guess uh, mm-hmm. you could say. Whatever span of life that uh, you want to mm-hmm. what you want to call that. I mean, you know, it feels a little weird considering I'm only twenty eight, but we're still young though yeah we're no we're still young that's my point that's my point yeah (laughs) uh, but um when you said tech you graduated if if, i'm assuming you graduated with like i want to say like it computer science in a way or something else uh it's like a dual program at Rutgers where you do electrical and computer engineering oh dude you're a genius no no uh you can say no you're you're very humble if i hear if i tell myself like i'm an electrical what did you say like uh electrical and computer engineering yeah I can't even do that, bro. <laughs> no, I think everybody <laughs> can do it if they have an interest in it. If you, it's, a, very I think, true, it, very it, true, I think very it's, very true. you know, it depends on where your interests lie. Very true. Believe it or not, um, I've like, I used to be kind of like a delinquent in uh, middle school. Oh, how and so? in high school, mm. uh, probably too. Uh, uh, I won't get into too too much of it for um, you know. little, 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 little details. A little great briefs. So you don't have to talk I, too you know, much. I used to get in trouble a lot. Uh, my, you know, my friends were. Uh, mm-hmm. I still I'm friends with a lot of them today, believe it or not. But but uh, but you know they they kind of mellowed out too. Yeah. But uh, we used to get into trouble a lot. But you know to put it uh, lightly. Uh, gotcha, gotcha, you know, gotcha. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking. Getting about. on people's <laughs> properties and when we didn't belong there and doing things that you know weren't necessary. I mean, allowed. like we we were like teenagers though. You know what I mean? Back yeah. then you just we were just reckless. Yeah. No. Yeah. I I had like I definitely didn't think about the future as much. When I was younger, oh, and um, mm-hmm. I had like a come to Jesus moment, where like not literally, but mm-hmm. but like I um, we, I started like applying to colleges, mm-hmm. and for I don't know why, but I I visited Miami University. Mm-hmm. Wait, which the one in Ohio or the one like the actual no, university like in actual Mi- University of Miami. Gotcha, gotcha. And gotcha. I thought it was like so beautiful, and like the campus was so nice. Yeah. And I was like, I need to go here. <laughs> like, like I, I need, need to, to go here, and like I didn't have the grades for it, and like it's hard to get in there too. Yeah, like it you. was really competitive at especially at the time it was competitive, but even mm-hmm. now I don't I haven't I don't know it, it might be more or less competitive. It, things kind of vary, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, at the time it was pretty competitive, and they had like a mm-hmm. uh like a like a it's like a program. They, it wasn't a program. It was um they had like a like a an app, like a propensity to like like mm-hmm. they they were known for like your, if your GPA was like pretty good yeah but your SAT scores were like dynamite you can get in because oh. some schools will like weight different things depending on exactly how they 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 utilize or vary it yeah they'll much. like yeah, yeah. you know they have different preferences for different scores like maybe right. they'll view like sports or extracurriculars or GPA or what type of classes you took you mm-hmm. know in certain ways like if you go to like a like a tech oriented school like they might mm-hmm. you know find it acceptable that your GPA is a little lower as long as like the GPA was in like AP Chem and physics and gotcha. those types of classes and your math SAT scores are really high and they won't care about your writing SAT scores you know gotcha. like, so anyways mm-hmm. so I got lucky because I my GPA was okay it was like mm-hmm. three six ish. That's that's pretty good. Three point six. Well, but for like the University of Miami, for the University like, of Miami, it was like not three nine plus was like ideal. God. And then, but but they God, did God. weight like SAT scores really really highly. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I can like redeem myself. I, yeah. You know, I can I can I can get in. Yeah. And then I studied my ass off. I like paid out of pocket for for like mm-hmm. uh, like tutoring on like SATs, and I like kicked the shit out of the SATs, and I did really well. Uh huh. Um, but then I ended up getting. I did not get in actually, so I, I shouldn't. Wait, say it. seriously? I, I didn't get in. Well, what? So that's crazy. It's, it's funny because I didn't actually even apply. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, uh, so, so, I only applied to two schools at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, it was Maryland University, yep. which I did get in, mm-hmm. and that was where my brother went, and uh, it's nice. a really great school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Rutgers uh, mm-hmm. as well, so I ended up going to Rutgers. So obviously, I applied to Rutgers, mm-hmm. and the reason I didn't apply to Miami is because there was like this. Was, I think when did I graduate? When, when did we graduate high school? Do you remember? I it was probably around the same time. So just, yeah, twenty twelve. I know what twenty twelve. Because you're, how old are you, 28? You're turning 29. What is it? So is it, I was class of 13, I think. So you're, you're after, for, you're after me, yeah. So this was like around the time where like the, the Great Recession happened. Mm-hmm. And like there was a lot of like financial turmoil. My dad was in like the mortgage-backed securities business. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, so he, he, so he kind of so knows that, like the brief so, yeah, so behind you know, the scenes. If you know anything about that, that was like a kind of a shit show. Um that's like kind of like the yeah the underpinning for why the thing happened so like his company yeah kind of went bust and um it was no get so money was tight yeah and it was kind of a big transition because we were pretty you know Mm -hmm. we did pretty well before that but then all of a sudden it was like the flip the switch was flipped and i'm i was a little empathetic towards my parents so i'm like you know it would be like yeah on it would be undue to even like apply there considering the tuition yeah. was like fifty five thousand dollars i was gonna say to to piggyback on that too because you know financially even when you have like a really good G, like 3.6 is pretty solid but i know it was, because yeah. it's, but you nailed the sats yeah but even after all that and thinking about like you need like a very big scholarship to really think about wanting to go to the university of miami you yeah know what i mean yeah 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 they, and, they did give scholarships but still. yeah but still it's like it's yeah. expensive regardless it's, it was, it's, un, it's yeah. unreasonably expensive yeah. yeah and then that's why you probably you know Rutgers would be like idealistically because yeah. you're in state yeah. you know what I mean so it's so much exactly. cheaper you Which know what I mean part of the reason yeah. why I ended up going to Rutgers yeah Yeah, and it's also like uh, they also have really good programs too at the, at Rutgers anyways yeah. you know what I mean well it depends on which program Yeah, but I'm, I'm pretty sure like what you were majoring in that's a solid program yeah especially yeah. and it's cheaper yeah and, and I, yeah I'll yeah. sum it up basically I got into I got to Maryland Mm-hmm. And um, they didn't put me in the engineering school, like directly. I applied directly to engineering. Mm-hmm. It was more money. Rutgers was in state. Um, it ended up just being more cost efficient to go to Rutgers. Plus, I got directly into the engineering school because of my math SATs. Yeah. Um, I got like 10 points off a perfect score. So, like, they, the engineering department, like, basically direct, you know. Damn. Even, yeah. They just like. Pfft. Yeah. Pfft. So, so you know, that was, that was a pretty big uh, mm-hmm. uh, incentive to go there. And, you know, I went there and I don't regret it. Which kind of, like, brings me to this particular Pati- talk of it at hand yeah the topic at hand because i wanted to talk to you about like just like finance and yeah. in general like like the- long term like how do you like the approachment yeah to, to you yeah. know u- utilizing your money like yeah just like utilizing your money efficiently like the best ways that people there's th- there's so many things mm. that people don't talk about um and just for reference for the people watching i don't have any Mm -hmm. official finance background like i said i went to school in engineering i do have the youtube channel where i talked about finance topics like briefly but check it out check check it out (laughs) check out Uh, this channel but um um, i actually i actually privated a lot of my finance videos because i didn't feel like it was it was good to have those in the way they present it i'll probably start making youtube videos in the future where i talk about them in a more responsible way gotcha but, gotcha but uh because <laughs> like i was like recommending like stock picks and stuff yeah and then i was like it was during the time during covid where everybody was like mm. blowing up recommending stock picks and like oh buy this <laughs> buy this stock buy this stock and i'm like i gotta get on this yeah, train once it like went down i was like oh bye 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 yeah like, and i'm like quick and then like once everybody was like yeah, maybe this is like a little unethical, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, maybe I should like pull that back a little bit because I felt like mm-hmm. I don't know. It, I I felt like a sense of like I know better than these guys, like, and they're making like all this money recommending like like dog crap, like yeah. I could do it better. And then I did it, and then I like kind of turned out to be the same as them. So <laughs> you're just like okay, maybe yeah, this and I'm like, yeah, on I'm me. like, I'll let me pull back, <laughs> let me pull back a little, and then like maybe in the future, uh, my last video was on mm-hmm. was on. Uh, it, it was kind of like a transition from the food stuff where I started yep. talking about like how to make your own Starbucks coffee at home mm-hmm. and I made like a latte and a cappuccino and a frappuccino Yeah, and like I compared the costs and this was like the first time I did this in a video where I like compared the cost of like 
mm -hmm. what it would be to like actually buy this coffee every day versus making it at home and then like oh uh, i see yeah, yeah yeah like a versus versus yeah, yeah it was yeah, like yeah, a versus yeah. and then like you take the remainder of the money and like invest it and like how much like what's the opportunity cost of like going to starbucks every day and then there's also like some personal satisfaction of like oh i can like make this and like it's an entertaining hobby oh. and you can like get into it so there's like brownie points that are associated with like the pleasure of being able to like do it yourself and without like, like spending like six dollars exactly at like a starbucks yeah. you can just make it at home yeah, exactly and this kind of will go to the point too especially like the origin of it I, i'm assuming this, this is my my thinking so far of what i'm hearing the origin of like i guess when you realized about long-term finance started from like when you were applying for colleges right I, I, that's kind my, of it was kind of the root of it to be honest yeah, yeah. i think it definitely was and then it kind of i guess allowed you to really start thinking it because you once you had like the scenario with the University of Miami and then obviously you had Maryland in, in the list and you had Rutgers and then your dad obviously had like, you know, kind of like thought it through with you or, mm. or something like that. Then it probably made you think about the future pretty much, right? Yeah. And sorry, you start thinking you analytically, start, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Gotcha, you start like gotcha, weighing gotcha. the potential opportunity costs mm -hmm. and um, there's, there's a lot of things that we do in life and we don't really think about why we do them. We just know we have to do them. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be okay um yeah but i think it, i think we would benefit a lot more from like questioning the underlying um mm -hmm. reasons why we do things like why do we have to go to this school versus another school like what's the real payout versus like the social reward or like Oof. um it's 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 tough to kind of like see these things in in like a way in, a, in like a kind of like a pretty excel formatted way when we're going through the motions doing all these things but gotcha, gotcha. but but if you kind of like take a step back and like analyze like what's the like at the end of the day, like I work in big tech and my colleagues are all like Ivy League, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And even at my first job mm -hmm. where like I was like kind of like just one of the sheep, you know, like yeah, not, one, not like they didn't. Scapegoats. Yeah, I was just like a scapegoat. Even my colleagues were like I remember this one guy was like Cornell and this other guy yeah. was like some other private school that was really good, like Stanford or something. And just, I came from Rutgers, which is like a respectable school. Yeah. Like it's not bad. But at the end of the day, like it just it didn't feel, matter. It, you know, like, yeah. And like the guy who like thought he had to go to this great school and paid maybe twice as much as me, he didn't get like the same return on investment that like I got from like going to Rutgers, for example. Right. So like, like and that kind of like extends to like a lot of things. So mm -hmm. extended um, more about like questioning a lot of things too. Like, you know, yeah, like, why yeah. why go to a, like an Ivy League school when I can just go to, like, yeah. not like a like like a like you know nothing like crazy or anything, but just like a yeah. nice college where you you know it's enough for you to, to get what you get. Yeah, and there's, I mean? and, and there's nothing wrong with going to an Ivy, Ivy League school. Nothing think, wrong. Yeah, no, yeah. Course, I think that like there are reasons to do it, right? Like, yeah. So like if you're really interested in like a very specific field of like math mm -hmm. or physics, and you know that like one mm -hmm. of the professors at like Princeton is like on the cutting edge of some like new yeah. new technology and like uh semiconductors or whatever like, yeah. like and you want to study and be around this guy mm -hmm. and like it is your lifelong journey to do this thing then yeah. like that could be a really compelling version or a, a reason to go or like law and you want to like study under some like really yeah you know, influential lawyer who who is now teaching at harvard or like, right and there there could be reasons to do those things but most people aren't thinking like oh i, I want to go to lawyer like harvard to do this they're like i want to go to harvard so i can you know everybody will love me and i'll get a lot of money being a doctor it's like yeah it's, you know it's like but it's like the, you have to see the bigger picture yeah. you know what i mean yeah, yeah. like but like you said though it really does depend especially because you know Ivy League schools, like obviously they're they're very tough to get in, obviously. for sure, yeah. for sure, and obviously it's going to be like a lot of money, but yeah. always going to be reasons behind it. But yeah. at the same time, too, there's an other factor too. Like I've seen people that that never went, like same with you, like they never like went to like Ivy League or anything like that. Or maybe they didn't even go to college at all, or they didn't even go to college, but they yet they yeah. they're doing like successful things on their own and making money by just. Yeah. working hard at it and obviously like working smart yeah you know what i mean yeah but like like you said nothing against ivy league schools at all yeah. nothing wrong with it at all yeah it's just like the the thinking too it's just like the the cost analysis yeah like thinking about like god damn i'm about to like spend six figures just for like this school yeah. you know what i mean unless like you know they you know your parents have like a very like you know, Is high if class. Parents, if your parents yeah. are paying, like, go for it. Yeah, if your like, parents, and they don't, and they're, they're not willingly work. paying. If they're willingly yeah, paying. Yeah, I was going to say, if they're willingly paying, then, okay. then, you know, take that, you know, take that opportunity, man. Yeah. Like, do it. But if you have to take out debt, 
That's a that, whole that's other a, ball game. That's a different ball game. That's a different ball game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, if your parents are paying for you to go to school, uh-huh. go for it. Like, yeah. take take the best school you get. They don't, you know, that they're if, that you, that somebody else is that somebody else's dime. You know, go for it. But yeah. I love the fact too that you were able to to realize the bigger picture, especially at like a teenager, like high school, pretty yeah. much, because that's where you started. You know, when I started realizing, I was an idiot. I literally started realizing. Um, you're gonna laugh at this, and you're probably no, gonna like no. enjoy this story. But in 2021, I did like a summer internship. Mm-hmm. At the time, too, I was majoring in computer science, like in mm-hmm. CCM. And luckily, I had a good friend of mine who was I was able to get the connections for. Mm-hmm. It's actually her dad that was the you know the person that works for that company, and I was able mm-hmm. to get the internship because of the connections and the links. Okay, yeah, that's that's nice. Which is nice, right? That's nice. So, yeah. obviously, at the time, like this is like 2015. So keep in mind, at the time, it was like the internship was you're you're paying 15 an hour. In this era, like in 2023, it's probably more than that because yeah, yeah, nowadays yeah. it's like interns are getting more than like. Yeah, yeah what it was back then so i'm you know i'm getting 15 an hour in my mind so this is when i knew i was very immature with my my habits especially in terms of like long term mm-hmm. yeah this is where my mom whooped my ass yeah, yeah. i remember like even when i was like because in my mind like oh yeah i'm making my i'm gonna spend everything all my dime i'm spending yeah, food that's, that's spend clothes that's, that's, that could be yeah yeah and that's not that's not uncommon i, I you say i'm gonna call your name but that's not like uncommon yeah like that's most people do have lifestyle inflation yeah and um, it, it's a wake it, up call. It's, it's 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 something that you'll 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 like talk to like yeah. you'll talk to like people who aren't like doing so great financially, and they'll be like, "I'm broke." And then mm-hmm. you'll talk to people like middle class, and they're like, "I can't afford to live." And then you talk to like really rich people, and they're like, "I live paycheck to paycheck." It's like, how is it possible that everybody is broke? Yeah. Um, and it's really because like every a, a lot of these people are living based on what they're mm-hmm. affording like their cash flow is cash flow yeah and, pretty much and if you live below your means you can you'll learn really quickly that like there, you can probably save more than you think and that doesn't like apply to people who are like yeah. really struggling but but for like the vast majority of like middle class, middle class yep, upper yep. middle class and like even like lower middle class i would say like there are things that you can do and it kind of relates back to like that whole starbucks thing we were talking about is like mm-hmm. a lot of people mm-hmm. like if you look at like the the spending habits of people in these income brackets mm-hmm. a lot of them are spending money on things that they like don't need and like you can make the like mm-hmm. analysis of you know like these are like the little things that like get people by and like mm-hmm. who are, like who am i or who is anybody else because mm-hmm. i'm nobody but but mm-hmm. um to like tell people yeah. what they can and can't yeah. spend their money on and it kind of gets me to this thing where it's kind of a meme in yeah. like the finance community where it's like stop buying like avocado toast and like yeah, yeah and like yeah. and like stop buying starbucks and like save your money mm-hmm. and i think there's a middle ground there where yeah. there's probably truth to both sides mm-hmm. and again it gets me back to that starbucks radio where it's like you can probably have your cake and eat it too right if you put in a little bit of that effort where it's like i was talking to you before there's there's diminishing returns on the mm-hmm. effort you give into something yeah. Where if you give a hundred percent effort, it might take an inordinate amount of time mm-hmm. to like replicate something. So for example, gotcha. like, like yep. if you're like a super chef, right? You can like replicate like you know three star Michelin meals. Like yeah. Like, like it takes a whole lifetime of training and skill, and skill. And ten thousand hours to develop yeah. that ability. Mm-hmm. But you can get eighty percent of the amount of like physical mm-hmm. enjoyment by spending a, a tiny fraction of that time training to yeah. develop your skills as a chef to recreate really delicious like awesome uh, food yep, yep. you know instead of spending 10,000 hours you could you can spend 500 200 hours becoming like you know, like learning how to cook things like learning yep. foods from around the world learning what spices play well together like yep. tech, like basic techniques and you might not be a master or even like adept at any of them but you know how to to do it and you'll do and you'll have really good output i see and you'll save yep, a ton yep, of money, money. Yep. because you won't have to pay somebody else for their skill at the end of the day yep. is that the um is this because we were talking about this like through our conversation is that what the um again i'm i'm obviously trying to understand it too mm-hmm. in terms of like philosophy is that the like the grounded approach that you were telling me about where it's like i don't know if that's what it, the the terminology yeah. means but it's like uh something where you're like instead of like like you said you can have like uh, you go to a restaurant, mm. you know, five star like 
restaurant, Michelin, mm-hmm. whatever, yeah, and yeah, yeah. you're going to be paying pretty much like almost $100, maybe $100 for food. Yeah, for your starter, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> versus like not only like I'll just buy the ingredients for just a better deal, mm-hmm. I'm also honing my skills. Yeah, there's something to that. Something yeah. to that, right. Yeah. So yeah. it's like that. that's what I see. Like I see like – is that what it's called? Is that a ground or is that something else? I'm like just kind of – Well – I'm asking you the question because I don't Everything know. Everything <laughs> is kind of intertwined in a way. I think yeah, that yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. part of mm-hmm. like the joy we receive in doing anything in life isn't yeah. just like getting a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also like working towards a thing and like mm. developing yourself as like a person as well. Like there's like some character development, it's I like, guess. It's like killing two birds with one stone. Yeah, like, exactly. It's like the most money. efficient way to like maximize your happiness in, yeah. in, a, in a kind of weird way. It's like um, mm-hmm. I, I don't recall – the exact studies or whatever it may be but right right but i i believe if i'm hopefully i'm not talking shit right here but but i believe like there were situations where like people were like the quality of life in terms of like self-satisfaction was measured be like between two groups of people yeah it was like one it might have been it might have been like Mm -hmm. like an animal study where like 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 Mm -hmm. chimpanzees or something were like given things and like one where like they had to work for the reward versus like one where they were given the reward like obviously Mm -hmm. both were like had like like measurable increase in like satisfaction yeah but like the ones that like worked for the reward like had like yeah it was it was um like statistically significant like increase in like self like i, I don't know how they measured it, it might have been animals it might have been humans i forget yeah I, I recall reading something along these lines but it, yeah but i think that we all intuitively know like when we work some really hard for something and there's a payoff at the end that payoff feels really good satisfaction yeah like that's satisfaction yep, you know, yep, and like yep. and if we're looking for happiness at the end of the mm-hmm. day it's that's you know not just like hey can i get starbucks and enjoy my starbucks at the end of a hard work week but right. like i think if you can if you can like make it yourself mm-hmm. and you enjoy making it yourself and yeah. then you get to taste it i think net net there'll be even more enjoyment there plus you get the added benefit of like mm-hmm. now you now you can like not have to pay somebody else for that skill and i like that i like that yeah i like that i'm kind of a chronic hobbyist Mm -hmm. that kind of like nothing wrong with that at all that's actually yeah (laughs) like and like i want to get more hobbies and get more good at it that kind of um yeah it's like a tangent but in my personal life i'm kind of like a chronic hobbyist as Mm -hmm. like an extension of like that philosophy that i have Mm -hmm. because this is starting from like Oh, this is even when you were even a kid, like you were being like a chronic um, hobbyist. I think it's hobbyist. probably something yeah. I've more done more. Re- this is probably something I've inherited from my dad because he's kind of the same way. But uh, but gotcha, um, gotcha, gotcha. I find, and you can you can even ask Ma, you know Jen, who's sitting sitting behind us here uh, today. My she was also on episode two. Just yeah, make sure to check that out. Also, yeah, continue. And, <laughs> but but I get I get really interested in things. Yeah, and then I don't necessarily like drop them, but. I know I keep I keep the things I learned in in, on the, in the back pocket, but mm-hmm. but um like I'll get really into like whiskey and like collecting whiskey, and then I'll get like really oh into, dude like, you were you, like I remember like a not long ago too not long ago, I think it was like last year we we had this conversation yeah. oh St Patrick's Day probably, we had like a yeah. like a thirty minute discussion about whiskey and you were very like particular with like the difference of especially with the barrel yeah. type of barrel I was like oh you, you really are. Well, there's detail about that. I mean, a lot of people would like yeah. say you're like pretentious. I think it's good to be pretentious sometimes. No, because you're, you're, you you know, you did your research. Yeah, you when you when you drink it, yeah. you can like appreciate it, and I think that's like pure joy. Yeah, where it's like you you really understand what's going on around you, and like mm-hmm. you don't have to like go to a bar and ask like a bartender like what's your recommendation. You can like go select oh, a whiskey in a store <laughs> at like a fifth of the price and yeah. like enjoy it in your home, like enjoy it with friends, and like. Yeah. There's, there's there's a benefit there but I you know I get I get into whiskey and then I stop collecting whiskey as much I get into wine I stop collecting wine as much mm. you know I get into uh, you but, know, but now I'm kind of like into cars and like yeah. and like and there's I think that if you take the lessons we just talked about about like putting in the effort learning understanding and like developing your skills mm-hmm. in a way that you, you can know, add it to your knowledge like it's part of your it's it, forever sticking with you but I think also yes Mm-hmm. But I think also we kind of reap the rewards of that skill mm-hmm. in a way that's – it's kind of interesting. Like yeah. like a lot of people would say like something is like a waste of money. But right. you'd be surprised and a, po- a lot of people probably already know this. But mm-hmm. like a lot of people you hear on the internet, for example, like people turn their hobbies into like something that's lucrative. Like, yeah. like I see you got a bunch of shoes behind me like here. You know. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. So like – Casual. You, 
you okay. probably have heard stories of like people like sneakerheads becoming. You said you, you don't like me using that word, but you know, sneaker it's a, enthusiasts. It, what's it called? There's a sh- sneaker condosaur. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever it may be. <laughs> the the at the fundamental basis, people can collect shoes if they know what they're doing mm-hmm. and sell them for like five x. Right, yeah. because they appreciate in value, or they, you know, they just know the market, and mm-hmm. like that can happen with wine, that can happen with whiskey, that can happen with cars. Mm-hmm. The Lamborghini Countach was like seventy thousand dollars in 08 and now they, now it's like a six hundred fifty thousand dollar car today. Like, 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 yep. like you could, if you know what you're doing, mm-hmm. you can, you can enjoy things, and if, like, if you're cooking, you can make your own food. Yeah, um, you know, like, and you might not be getting like, you might not sell it in a restaurant, but you might save money by making it yourself. There might be some type of Gotcha. Opportunity cost or something. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. You know, involved there. So, like, you know, there's, there's, mm-hmm. you, you be get. I think in life, one of like my fundamental axiom is you get rewarded for things you know, mm-hmm. and um, it might be in an opportunity cost. It might be you might sell something to somebody. It might be in a lot of ways, but that mm-hmm. kind of ties back to the whole, uh, fine, like knowing what you're doing financially speaking. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of yeah. financial too, yeah. I also want to know on this particular end too, like. Because we talk about like th- like this is good because it also pertains more for like makes things easier in in the long term, right? Yeah. Like, what's your like strategy in terms of like when you how you would invest? Like, how, where do you put like sure. your yeah. money and investments on? Yeah. In particular? So like yeah. obviously like the first step is you save the money from doing mm-hmm. the things we just talked about, where like you, you develop your skills, yep. get money, get, get you put money in your cash account. Mm-hmm. What do you do with this money? So. Um, there's a lot of ways to get rich if mm. you save money. Um, mm. Financial freedom, guys. Yeah, financial, financial freedom. freedom. <laughs> I mean, like historically, people have done it in real estate. Yep. Uh, historically, people have done it in the stock market. And you own equity in companies. Mm-hmm. And, like you know, you don't work. Mm. You have other people work, and you own capital in the in the businesses that produce. So so like, mm-hmm. well, um, I think um, the two biggest things, uh, you know, other than like coming up with some type of like million dollar idea or like opening up a business, like yeah. whatever it may be. The two normal ways that everyday people get really rich is by owning companies. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. AKA investing in stock investing market. Investing stock market. And yep. um, owning uh, real estate, which in a, in a way you can kind of say that's also owning businesses because yeah. you're either owning the real estate and selling it later, which is probably less reliable, or you're renting it out and kind of creating your own business. Mm-hmm. So really at the end of the day, it's like owning a business is really yeah. the only way. It's like kind of like a way to utilize, take advantage and make like some sort of like that passive income like yeah. on the side where it's constantly growing while you're still like doing work, yeah. which yeah. I've seen. That's actually the trend that I've been seeing yeah. like lately. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially like, um, so... My dad actually, I think, uh, my, my parents, I think they own like like two, three properties, I think, in the Philippines, mm-hmm. right? Keep in mind, this is not in the United States. This is like yeah, in the yeah, Philippines. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I've, the same around the world. It's the same around the world, pretty much. So like I know my, my dad because, you know, he's retired. So he pretty much is like, all right, I have this free time now. I have like the time to like, you know, finish what I needed to do, mm-hmm. especially like with the properties that I kept for like the longest period of time, which mm-hmm. is probably worth its value because it's been... I think he had it for like years. Yeah. So it's obviously like worth more than what it was in the beginning. Mm-hmm. So now, right now he's in the Philippines because uh, he's been starting to go there and would stay there for like months. Mm-hmm. So he was actually at one point last year he was gone from like March to July, pretty much. Mm-hmm. But the reason why he was out there was obviously because like he was starting to work on his property. Like you know he had like engineers like because he was trying to. I, I I know the the first project was uh, revamping like he's my, like doing reconstruction. Yeah, like especially with my uh, my grandma's house. Mm. You know, it's obviously at also out, in the Philippines. Yeah, okay. out of, out out of date outdated already. Mm-hmm. It looked like it was time to like just collapse the house, yeah, like just demolish start it, from square one, yeah. start from the square one, and that's what he's currently doing right now. And then there's like another property I think that's still like open. Mm-hmm. Now keep in mind too, like I know like my dad also I think. Like when both my mom and my dad like pass, like I know it's already like passed on to me and my sister. Mm-hmm. So I'm already thinking like I talked to my dad about it too. I'm like, hey, dad, like he was like, whatever you're done with the like you know when we're passed, like when we pass away, do whatever you want with it. Like if you want to make a passive income with it, like take mm-hmm. advantage. So obviously too that like, it helps it leverage for me because not going yeah I don't want yeah sorry 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 yeah. but it was yeah. like blessed I'm blessed that they no, yeah, 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 yeah you know what I mean yeah, yeah. but now it's like like you said like. I, I want to, you know, this is that that one topic that we talked about like earlier, where it's like, you know, 
people there's a difference between like the rewards thing like you, you work hard for it mm-hmm. and then you get the rewards and then there's people that's given the silver platter pretty much mm-hmm. you know what i mean like i was given the silver platter for it but i don't want to like you know not take advantage of it you know yeah. what i mean i want to make it like a reward yeah. kind of thing you know what i'm saying yeah. but to to piggyback from your thing like i you know i want to make it something where i can make passive income mm-hmm. you know what i mean obviously maybe make it like a nice area if i want to go to the philippines and visit like i have yeah, a place like a vacation like house, a vacation house or too or airbnb Air, i was thinking like airbnb so then you can do both yeah. and do both exactly yeah. so that's what i was thinking yeah. obviously that's a that's a that's a long-term future thing yeah. because you know that's still you're the, you're, i mean you're on the right track yeah. exactly so that's what i was thinking because like going from that it made me realize like i think this is how people will you know make like that that big income and kind of get to like their their whatever their financial freedom is where yeah. it's just like as long as you have like open like a bit like you have that money to open a business and stuff, that's kind of where like yeah it kind of stems from. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, real estate's like yeah, the oldest, like real... most popular business to be in, right? It's it like, still is. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's um it and it it's it's kind of going back to what we said before, where it's like you get rewarded for things you know, mm-hmm. and if you know about real estate, you can open up a a real estate business yeah right? and you could rent to people and if you're good at managing people and repairs and mm. construction you know these are things you could be rewarded for yeah um yeah and again so so it kind of all ties in yeah and, um is that like a um a, like a plan for you long term like you know with real estate and stuff like that so i yeah, have like a uh what's it called like a mapping i have a lot of controversial have. theories about real estate uh i, I kind of oh do tell okay Please. i kind of alluded Please. But, but before we talk about real estate, All right. before we talk about real estate, <laughs> I kind of wanted to go back to the um, to the business thing. That yeah. we From what I was saying before, uh, I was saying that like really, mm-hmm. at, at the end of the day, one of the only real ways for like the everyday person to really you know, mm-hmm. build their wealth uh, is that they have to own a business in some way, shape, or form. And it right. seems like really nebulous to say like, oh, own a business or just just open a business, bro. It's like yeah. It's like no, it's like. Uh, there, you know, you have the stock market, and mm-hmm. a lot of people like don't necessarily understand exactly how the stock market works, or right. you know, or, or anything like along those lines. So, you know, I kind of want to like talk about <clears throat> like how everybody really should be investing in the stock market, and like why yeah. they won't necessarily just like lose their money overnight, or why it's not gambling, yeah, things like that, and like why it's like actually like a key aspect to like almost everybody in the world kind mm-hmm. of building their wealth and like potentially you know yep. becoming like financially free yeah uh, so i kind of wanted to like talk on that before we talk about like the the real my controversial uh, views on real estate and all hey. that good stuff so let's, let's get back into that yeah, yeah. we'll let's, get back into that in a minute yeah, but, yeah let's do that let's do that but, but go ahead there's, there's a couple things that really um mm-hmm. everybody can do or almost everybody can do that can set them up and mm-hmm. if they're just doing these few basic things Mm. It's almost guaranteed that they'll retire and mm. be, you know, well off in the retirement. They won't have to like worry about money or anything like along those lines. Right. And a couple of those things are invest in stocks. Mm. Um, now we can get into how and where <clears throat> they'll be investing in those stocks, mm. and by doing those things specifically, yeah. they'll achieve those goals. Yeah. And um, the other thing is is kind of going back to what we originally talked about, where it's like develop skills and interests that. Um, mm. can benefit you financially, help you save money so that you can do step one, which is invest more in stocks. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, now, if you have some million dollar idea, by all means, mm-hmm. go for it, right? Like if you can like invent the next widget or fidget or like you have like yeah. a million dollar software idea or whatever, go do that if you have the financial means to do that. Yeah. Uh, most people don't, most people can't and most people don't you know, want to be bothered to do that. They enjoy doing the things they do today. Yeah. Which is fine. Which yeah, is fine. Yeah, yeah, and there's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with that. And I, that's me. That's yeah. that's presumably well, we're doing the podcast, so maybe 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 you have some big aspirations, which is good too. Which is, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> but but um most people who mm. work uh, have the option to get a four oh one K. Um most people who work have the option to get like an IRA. These are things that everybody should be doing. Yeah. Um the IRA is just like an account, or a four hundred and one k rather is just like an account mm. where you can get some like tax advantages. Where mm. instead of like if you pay, get you know uh, get paid ten thousand dollars a year, you know these are just make up numbers, but if you yeah. get ten thousand dollars a year, you know twenty and twenty percent tax will be like eight thousand dollars take home. Yeah, and instead of that, you can like take the difference where you can take instead of getting 
eight thousand dollars and investing that eight thousand dollars you can take ten thousand dollars and invest it lower your income so that maybe you only get nine thousand dollars mm-hmm. at the end of the year because yeah. you'll have invested that one thousand dollars yeah and then get taxed on the nine thousand dollars and instead of paying two thousand dollars in tax you pay like fifteen hundred in tax or something yeah. like that and that five hundred dollar difference is more money that goes into the investing account than where at the end of the account where you retire mm-hmm. et cetera, et cetera. gotcha gotcha um, now again we still haven't talked about like why everybody can own a business and why it's like not risky and everything. So yeah. let's kind of talk about that. So let's do it. Um, if I have, how should I approach this? I guess um, I can talk about. Mm-hmm. You can do like I said. Yeah. Whatever I'm, approach I'm think, it is, I'm thinking I'm, about. I'm, I'm thinking about like a, a, a good way to understand this. So a lot of people view stocks as like mm-hmm. these like things that go up and down in price, and the markets forces yeah. kind of like determined and it's random and and it's really elusive but at mm-hmm. the end of the day all a stock is mm-hmm. is like uh like kind of like a piece of financial engineering yep where there is mm. some company somewhere in the world it could be like coca-cola it can be a private company that i invented and i give to you because i want you to be my partner yeah whatever it may be where by owning a, they call them shares right yeah, shares because yep you now have a share um, of the company's earnings potential, right? Mm-hmm. So you have the right to the company's earnings, right? Uh, by owning a share of that company. So mm-hmm. um, let's say you have like Coca-Cola. Or, let's not start with Coca-Cola. Let's say I have like a garage. Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 not, a, uh, not a garage shop. Um, like a like a car wash. Car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And I have like ten shares in my car wash. Adam's car wash. Adam's car wash. There right? you go. There you and go. And I make like a hundred thousand dollars a year, mm-hmm. right? Um, and I have all my shares. It's a private company. I own it exclusively. I have no employees who yeah. own equity. I have no partners, nothing. Yeah. Um, and I make $100,000 a year. And because I'm the sole proprietor of that business, I can take that income. I can pay myself a salary. I can put it in my pocket. I can reinvest. I can do whatever I want. It's my private business. Yeah. But now let's say I want to bring Jan on. And yeah. I want him to partner with me because he knows how to... Uh, you know, build car washes in the next town over. And yeah. he has like really good expertise in that. And yeah. I think that like, I want two car washes. Yeah. So Jan comes along and says, you know, I want to partner with you to build a car wash empire or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or in but this is, how it's, this is how it's, it starts to, you know, stem from. It yeah. starts to expand. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So in addition to bringing you on and paying you potentially a salary, mm-hmm. I say, I'll sell you two or five or whatever my shares in my company. So that you can then get um, the right to pocket mm. a certain percentage of my income. I previously I made a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Maybe we, you know, I sell you part of my car wash. You give me mm. uh, a million. Let's say I price my car wash at a million dollars. Yeah. Right? Which is some arbitrary number. It, it, mm. Typically, it's a the price of a company is a function of how much money you make. So yeah. in this or in this scenario, I'm pricing my car wash at like 10 times the amount of money my car wash makes every year. Mm-hmm. Just as a random random example, right? Right. Um so so I'm selling you my car wash at 10 times earnings. Mm-hmm. You pay me $200,000 mm-hmm. for the right to have 100, you know, 20% of that $100,000 every single year in perpetuity. Right? Mm. So now so now you own two shares of that car wash. You're making twenty thousand dollars a year by being a part of my car wash. Yeah. And if I operate for a hundred years, you make, you know, your money back 10, 10, 10, 10 20 times, you know, whatever. Yeah. Right? It's can, like pretty much 10, 20 times like yeah. what you were doing initially. Yeah. The share. But now yeah. there's a cash. I'm not making a hundred thousand dollars in a year. You have the expertise. We build a second car wash, a third car wash, a fourth car wash together. Now we're making four hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Right? And now those two shares I sold you. Are worth a lot more because now we're not just making a hundred hundred thousand dollars a year we're making four hundred thousand dollars a year yeah and if i want to keep the same pricing of my car wash at 10 times earnings my car wash is now worth four million dollars right mm-hmm. because we've expanded right yeah we're not we're now making more cash flows and um our car wash is more expensive and if you wanted to mm-hmm. you could say i don't want to be a part of this car wash anymore i have something else i want to do and you could swap your equity someone maybe some other buyer comes along yeah and says hey i want those shares because i want to be a part of this car wash and you could say okay and you could sell those two shares that you originally bought at what'd you buy it for uh two hundred thousand dollars yeah for now 4x 
yeah. what you sold, what you originally bought them for. Because now this new car wash is making four million dollars or four hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Um, but it's priced at four million, and twenty percent is going to be mm-hmm. four hundred thousand dollars. Oh, I'm sorry, eight hundred thousand. I was yeah, eight hundred thousand. Right? So now, yeah, looking back, this seems like regular, you know, small business stuff that happens. You can imagine in this thought experiment that like anybody can do in the real world. Yeah. But we actually just did like a whole microcosm transaction of what actually is the stock market and how it works. Mm -hmm. So now if we stop talking about Adam's car wash and Jan's equity and building car washes and all this stuff, we can expand this to like Coca-Cola or like Microsoft or Google or whatever X company. Um, All of these companies make money. They're machines Mm -hmm. that can generate revenues. And by owning shares in those companies, now it's not going to be 10 shares, it's going to be like millions Millions of shares, shares. billions of shares. (laughs) But you get the right to collect certain amounts of earnings from these companies and like yeah. some people sometimes the companies will increase in price uh, mm-hmm. because they'll like retain their earnings in like a bank account or reinvest and the companies will grow so you can mm-hmm. get your shares will go up in value as like the company makes more and more money and saves that money or reinvests yeah. into its infrastructure or sometimes they'll have something called a dividend where they'll pay you out a fraction of the earnings or, yep. just by you know kind of like how like a bank account would 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 pay you interest it's not right. the exact same but they'll pay you out a certain mm-hmm. um, amount of money, but depending on your ownership. I was gonna say too. Is it like the dividends also depends on like how much like you like buy their shares? Pretty much? is it like something like that. Yeah, you get yeah. paid a certain like like if it's like a hundred shares. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If, you, if it's a hundred dollars for one share of a company, mm-hmm. and they pay like a three percent dividend, really, mm-hmm. w- really, what that means is for every share I own of company X, mm-hmm. they'll pay me three dollars. To own that share, so if I have ten gotcha. shares, they'll pay me thirty dollars, and if I have a hundred shares, they'll pay me three hundred dollars. Yeah. And it could be, you know, that percentage varies depending on how much that company's management decides yep. it's beneficial to pay their shareholders. Yep. But at the end of the day, by owning these shares, which mm-hmm. anybody can do in the open stock market, mm-hmm. you become a business owner. And it sometimes doesn't feel that way because it's like. Uh, because you're, you're obfuscated behind like these trading, uh, you know, uh, execution desks and yeah. and like brokerages and blah blah blah. But at the end of the day, every company like Apple and Microsoft and Google started in a garage somewhere, or started with like some private equity, yep. and they started just like our uh, car wash example. Yeah. And they wanted to raise money to expand, and so they sold their shares. So now wrapping it all up. Mm-hmm these things can seem risky at the surface like i don't want to buy microsoft stock because it can go down or it can go up you know i have all these like guys on all mm-hmm. these news networks saying like buy 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 sell 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 yeah you know like, <laughs> you know it's like like when you hear it like is the minute like it the crashes or whatever yeah. then everybody on the media buy now buy now yeah, quick yeah. before all yeah, yeah exactly so yeah so mm-hmm. if you think about it uh, kind of relating back to what we were just talking about before when with mm-hmm. the car wash example mm-hmm. if somebody says <clears throat> like if I come along you bought you buy the 20% stake in my company and mm-hmm. then some other Joe Schmo comes and says like hey I want to buy your 20% stake but I'll give you a dollar you just like laugh at him and say like get the hell out of here yeah, so yeah. like he could be like the market right mm-hmm. in the stock market saying like this is what I want to pay for your share yeah. but you know as 20% owner in a company with making $400,000 a year somebody mm-hmm. offers you a dollar you'd be like fuck off like, yeah. Like, oh, I make $400,000 a year just by owning this share the in this share. company. Yep, yep. So when the market says, when the market tells you that your ownership stake in a company is worth something, you have some real things to fall back on. You have real earnings, real revenues, real cash flows that mm-hmm. you can just look up. It's publicly available. And mm-hmm. You can say, you're wrong. In mm-hmm. the market, if you, ha- if, you own, if you buy a house and you have some guy... Yeah, mm-hmm. this is like this is, I don't want to take credit for this example. This is Warren Buffett, he's a famous investor, whatever. Yeah, yeah. He said he gives he brings Ber- this Berkshire thing. Hathaway. Berkshire Hathaway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he brings up this example. He has like something he says, and he yeah. says, if I buy a bunch of farmland, mm-hmm. he talks about this example. He uses like farmland a lot. Yeah. I have a big house on a big farm, and I have my neighbor farmer, mm-hmm. and all he does all day is he goes right up on the border of your lawn, mm-hmm. and he yells at you twenty four seven the price he wants to pay for your farm. He says, I want to buy your farm for $300,000. I want to buy your farm for $5 million. I want to buy your farm for... <laughs> you know, that's the market selling you what it wants to pay. And sometimes he'll give you an outrageous offer. Mm. And he's, he's going to give you way more than you paid for it. And sometimes you're like, okay, I'll sell. 
But yeah. but if he's giving you ridiculous offers way below what you know your farmland is worth, mm-hmm. then you can just like tell him to get the fuck out. Yeah, you're like, so go home. you don't have to pay attention because you're going to be getting dividends. Your stock price will over time mm-hmm. reflect the value of the company. And, and even though it might crash in the short term due to like some fear and uncertainty, mm-hmm. in the long term, there are real bank accounts and books and infrastructure and cash flows that will go into this company. And as people come to their senses, mm-hmm. the price of the stock will adjust over time to what it's actually worth. It's people, there's a common saying in the, in the, in the investing space, mm-hmm. I think they say in the short term, um, the, the stock market is a voting machine. Mm-hmm. And in the long term, it's a weighing machine, right? Everybody Ooh, can vote. That's actually a good, that's yeah. a good analogy on that. And, yeah, and, yeah. And, and another one that's just kind of piggyback off that is, uh, a stock market is a tool to take money from the impatient and give to the patient. It's like, you know, so is so like, oh, you know, that's yeah, a common yeah, one. Yeah, that yeah, people that's, say a, that that's common. Yep, that's, that's people pretty. say that. So it's like, um, in the long term, if you just keep your head cool and and you don't let your gut make the decisions, you just like let your head making the decisions. Your the the price of your stocks might wildly vary in in, in the short term, but over time. The stock prices will go up. They will pay dividends. Um, you know, mm-hmm. you will make money by being a business owner. Mm-hmm. And the hardest part of being a stock owner could be that it's gut wrenching, and it could not be for everybody to deal with that volatility. But the best thing you could do is not look all the time. Don't like you yep. hawk over your your investment portfolio and just see the number go up and down and up and down and up and down that could be you know that can be kind and, of like ptsd inducing yeah you know what's funny um to 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 piggyback on that too i when i first started doing like you know getting into stocks i used to do that it, where i, I just kept too. every day right like yeah. i just like oh my god why is it going down eventually you get desensitized yeah if you stay in it long enough you have to say you have to stick with it because yeah a lot of people will get stared out and that's when they lose the money. When the guy comes and says, "I'll buy your farm for a hundred dollars," and you know, and you just bought it for a million dollars, you're like, "Is you start quite second guessing?" You're like, "Is my stock? Is my farm worth a hundred dollars?" I don't. I can't. I, I, I don't know. You, but the worst thing you could do is sell it to that guy. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the stock market having that like level of like, I know the exact price at any given moment is actually a tool to benefit you because you know now what your mm-hmm. stuff what you you know if i'm 20 percent owner and my and i'm making four hundred thousand dollars and i want to sell it 10 times earnings you know it's worth eight hundred thousand dollars based on your estimate and if i mm-hmm. offer you anything below eight hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars you know it's garbage and if, but if i give you 10 million dollars that's a benefit to you as the asset holder as long mm-hmm. as you keep your calm and you know yep. and you know what you're doing yeah you have to research um, research yep. yeah research is important but you know i don't want to make it like too complicated there's some fundamentals that are really easy anybody can know it mm-hmm. and like these are kind of it kind of goes into what we're talking about so mm-hmm. stocks are important Cool. You understand what stocks are. That, you know, understanding everybody understanding is really important. Mm-hmm. Where to invest your stocks? You should be maxing out your four hundred one k's. You should be maxing out your IRAs. These are yes. like tax advantage things that anybody can do if they have like a basic, um, you know, uh, paycheck mm-hmm. kind of like payroll based job. They'll they'll always match your four hundred one k. That's free money. You got to do it. Yeah. Um, you get tax advantage. You get to put money in these businesses before the government takes a cut. Yep. Um, these are like just basic things. Have a savings account. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, create a budget. Like, make sure you're not spending like way. You know, like fifty percent of your paycheck on your 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 living situation mm-hmm. or your car situation. You know, make sure these are like reasonable percent. I think housing, thirty percent is the most you should be spending mm-hmm. on pre-tax earnings on on living situation. Car, yeah. I think it's like ten percent or something. I don't yeah. know the number rule, but something like that. Um, if you can't do those, do your best to make more. If you can't. You know, maybe it's, yeah, it's tough. It's it's tough it, it depends but, on like where you are, like scenario in yeah, the financial yeah, like yeah. aspect of things. There's usually yeah, something you can do to, to cut your expenses without like ruining your life. Mm-hmm. Um, tell me, tell me this too. Did the um, the pandemic like in 2020? I know it was a very bad time, especially for like mm. hum, the human world. Yeah, because everybody's sure. literally like millions have died. Yeah, you know what I mean. Sure. But did it help in a way, like in financial, like? purposes because i know it sounds weird mm. but i know for you can me be, you can be real you don't have to yeah, like, no, 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 real. I, no, I'll, I'll be yeah. real like, yeah, yeah. for me like it helped me a lot yeah because i was able to like especially like being at home all the time i mean i'm still living at home but still like not going to mm. Pat- piscataway at the time and you know yeah. going back and forth i was sure, saving yeah. so much money yeah you know and then it got to the point where i realized like i feel like during this 2020 2021 year I'm going to take advantage of like just 
putting and utilizing my investments mm-hmm. because I'm not spending, I'm not going anywhere. Like what's there at the time, like not, nothing's open. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, so realistically, did in your in your scenario at the time, wait, did that like help you in a way? Or actually, I don't know, because yeah. at the time to a lot of companies, I don't know if you were- I have a unique situation. All right, yeah, um, do tell, do tell. Personally, it didn't help me mm-hmm. because I was already kind of doing that thing. I, I already worked remote. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I already am pretty like yeah, yeah, yeah. Fiscally, you know, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, I I know what you're talking about, but I just can't remember the term. Yeah, I forget the word. But you, yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I you know, I'm a very uh, you know fiscally aware. Mm-hmm. Um, um, so I it didn't help me in particular, but I think it did help a lot of people mm-hmm. in that way for mm-hmm. those that weren't like super negatively affected mm-hmm. because it made them realize they could live without yes. having a lot of things and they could live with less and still not impact their happiness. I know a lot of people mm-hmm. there gotcha, was some gotcha. happiness issues, you know, people felt isolated, blah blah blah. Yeah, but yeah. like for like a lot of like the gamers and like the people who like like to read and like those were their hobbies, you know, before they might have been spending a lot on commuting and blah blah blah. And like now they realize like oh they don't need mm. a super nice car or they don't need to like spend all this money to you know have like this crazy house or whatever yeah. because like they were happy like you know in you know uh, a studio like mm-hmm. you know hanging out with their dog and their fiance or their girlfriend or their wife or whatever it may be like yeah. you know like they playing video games like eating good food cooking at home like mm-hmm. you know like they could live and be like fulfilled and have all these things and they could take that money and mm-hmm. they could invest now they could you know like you know save on starbucks or avocado yeah. toast like we were just joking about yeah before. yeah like, you know, like obviously avocado toast isn't going to be like the make or break between like doing yeah. any of these things but, but it's part of the analogy that we were yeah, really it, trying to yeah, get it extends at. Yeah, into like the every the all the little tiny things where you could you know this might not make or break and this might not break or break but if you just consider all of these factors together you might be able to get a couple hundred bucks a couple thousand mm-hmm. bucks to put into the 401k you know you know and um if, if you do the math Mm-hmm. Uh, this is like really surprising for a lot of people, but if you do the math and you look at like average market returns with dividends reinvested and all these things, um, most 401ks, if they're being maxed out, will be millions and millions and millions of dollars. Now, in your retirement, that could be you know 40 years away for some people, but yeah. it is something to aspire to, and that's just the beginning, right? Like, right. just like this is like the thing that everybody should be doing, and then there's like bonus points where it's like now you can have a private equity account where you're like a regular taxable fund or yeah or anything like that um and the number one thing that like anybody who doesn't know about investing is they should just invest in like a s p 500 index mm-hmm. fund or like a total stock market index fund mm-hmm. um put like all your money in there you don't have to worry about it pays dividends or like even like a dividend etf like uh schwab schwab, schwab dividend yep. etf like SC, schwab. schd is like a really like popular one that's like really mm-hmm. really highly rated It'll pay like a three and a half percent dividend. It might not sound like much, but you reinvest, you buy more stocks with the dividends. It snowballs. It becomes a big, big, thing. big thing. Yep, um, yep. And if you write, like I said, if you do the math, at like a seven percent return, uh, it is. It will be like several million dollars by the time you're retired, and it could be more if you mm. happen to earn more or you are really, really like saving and you don't drive, and don't have a car, or like you know, if you live in the city where you don't need a car, you could allocate your funds yeah. in an interesting way. But um, that's like the meat and potatoes. Like you do, you basically do that, do that, yeah. and you'll like generally be okay. And yeah. I kind of want to bring this back now because I know you brought up real estate before. Yes, yes. I was gonna say, yeah. I wanted to know your take and on that. Now we can kind of like talk about this and get like yeah. my my perspective on it because. Yep. 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 Because huh. when you invest in real estate, there mm-hmm. are like a lot of things that go into it. Like a, a common thing that people say is when you get a mortgage on a house, mm-hmm. that's the least you'll ever pay. When you mm-hmm. when you rent, that's the most you'll ever pay, right? It's like yeah. like like I, I rent in like a you know pretty nice building and like the, it's mm-hmm. it's not necessarily cheap, but like we our washer broke the other day, like we you know they come they gave us they gave us a brand new washer, no questions asked, like yeah. that would have been like two thousand bucks out of pocket. Mm-hmm. Um, you know we have a leak, we have mold because of the faucets or whatever. You know yeah. these are like five thousand dollar plumbing issues to hire a plumber at like five hundred dollars now, like you know whatever it may be, mm-hmm. um, don't have to worry about it. Now, when you so, if you mm. in a in a in a, an ideal world, excluding like interest rates and mm. all these other confounding factors, generally speaking, mm-hmm. if you take all of the money that it takes to buy a house and maintain mm. a house and uh, with the down payments and everything, yeah, the person like not the person, but um, in a one to one scenario where mm. you have like let's say like 
a four hundred thousand dollar house that you buy or a four hundred thousand dollar house that you rent mm -hmm. the person that buys the four hundred thousand dollar house mm -hmm. um will pay more out of pocket on a monthly basis than the person who rents that four hundred thousand dollar house mm -hmm. and there is a difference in the amount of money let's say this is like thirty five hundred dollars yeah. versus like thirty two hundred dollars like there's a three hundred dollar difference, difference where yeah. this renter will not have to pay that like additional for it might be taxes it might be for lawn care or garbage whatever it is mm. on general this is a general now there are some exceptions to this rule where mm. this guy can buy a house for cheaper than they can rent if you can be a savvy investor and you know the locations or you're good you, you know you can do some work on the house yeah there are exceptions and i'm not talking about the exceptions to the rule but generally speaking you can take that 300 dollars Mm -hmm. And you can invest it in the markets, like we were just talking about, the 401ks, yep. okay. the IRAs, IRA, whatever it may be. IRA, yep. And you will get a more return on that money. Mm -hmm. Now, the other person might say, hey, you might be investing, but this rent's all getting thrown in the garbage. Like, this guy over here buying a mortgage, he's building equity in the house, he's mm -hmm. owning part of his house over time, and that house is worth something. And, I, and that's true. Mm -hmm. But how mortgages are structured is that mm -hmm. for the first, like, 15 years, the money you pay... Um, like when you buy a house for four hundred thousand dollars, you don't really buy a house for four hundred thousand dollars. You take a loan from from a bank, bank. Yep. and you and you and you buy the house, yep. and then you pay interest on that loan. And what after thirty year thirty years, which is like a traditional mortgage, mm -hmm. what you end up paying to that bank that you loan the money from is something probably more like mm -hmm. eight hundred thousand dollars, which is about twice the amount of money that, that it you was were, initially that was initially guaranteed, guaranteed to buy the house at market price. Yep. And that other $400,000 that just randomly appears that is now tacked on that you pay the bank to, mm -hmm. well, they structure these loans so that that interest is paid first, right? Mm -hmm. Now, it, it varies, something called amortization, so like over time, mm -hmm. a bigger fraction of the money you spent will go towards like owning the house and a lesser fraction, like the last payment you make after 30 yeah. years 100% of that payment is equity of the house. And mm -hmm. the first payment that you make, I think it's like 67% on average is interest. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Like, so like if you pay $3,000, mm -hmm. only 1,000 of those dollars is actually going into owning the bank and the mm -hmm. other, uh, owning the house rather, and the other $2,000 goes into just paying the bank for the for the ability to take out the money and the buy loan, the house. The loan, exactly. Yeah. So you're like, that $2,000 mm -hmm. is the cost of living in that house and then this over here, you're paying three thousand dollars to live in that house, mm -hmm. um, which is the cost of living in that house. But over yeah. here, then you also have insurance, and you have taxes, and you have all these things that actually will probably make it significantly more. And, and it was only three hundred dollars in this example. In real life, it's like a thousand or even more. Gotcha. So, um, uh, the, yeah. So like, so there are a bunch of hidden things that are associated with houses. What, yeah. which is why for most situations, I personally believe. No, this is not financial advice, but mm -hmm. I think it's for the general person mm. is smarter to rent and mm. invest because mm. you're missing that opportunity cost. I haven't even talked about the fact that you need $100,000 down just yeah. to get that house to the bank to to, the, yep. where that $100,000 could be invested in the, in your 401ks and your IRAs and other mm. things. And that could be building equity. You could be owning businesses. Yeah. And that will be on an opportunity cost basis. Like where will this person be in 10 years and where will this person be in 10 years? This person who rented and invested will almost always be better off than the person who bought. Now, yeah. if you buy a house and you rent it out and you're creating a business out of your house, it's a whole new story. That's a different ball game. Whole new ball yeah. game. I'm talking about for the average person who wants to own and live in their house. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Owning real estate, making it into a business, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a stock, the stock market in its own little way, yeah. except it's like a private company. So if you're a savvy investor and you can take out leverage and you can build yeah. a business that's kind of a whole nother thing but mm -hmm. for the average person who doesn't want to be involved with like dealing with tenants and everything yeah almost always to be this person yeah um, do you think at the um at the time too um it's even more difficult to own a house nowadays because back in the day i feel like yes, it's not it's as bad. yeah so yeah yeah there's a million reasons why uh mm -hmm. one is that real estate values have gone up way more than wages mm -hmm. um the average person in America can't foot a five hundred dollar emergency expense. Yeah, and the average house is probably appreciated like four hundred percent since like two thousand like twelve, right? Like it's like or like two thousand or like two thousand five, whatever it may be. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So, um, plus wages have not scaled well with like inflation like, and all these other yeah, issues. Yeah, it like fluctuates. And yeah. this is bad, probably objectively speaking. Like this is just bad for people who yeah. want to own equity and or or whatever. Yeah. But I think it could be a 
Mm -hmm. um, a teaching moment for a lot of people who now can't afford to buy a house. Mm -hmm. And they're now kind of like forced into this position where they have to rent. And I think it like could help them in a weird kind of messed up way where mm -hmm. like they might be, if, if they're financially savvy, I think that like it mm. could save them from making a bad decision on buying a house that they can't yeah. afford. It gives them like the second thought. Too. Yeah. 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 It like, cause like interest rates are 7%. It's really expensive. Dude, to it's take high. Out. Yeah. It's really stupid. High. More than 7% maybe. Oh like, so like yeah. it could like prevent people from making like crazy, which is why interest rates are that high. Yeah. So they are, interest rates are controlled by the government to, to, to control like the flows of inputs and outputs to the economy. Um, mm -hmm. They do raise interest rates to slow the economy down to prevent yep. things like inflation right so like yeah. when it, it actually is in, in a weird roundabout way mm -hmm. you second guessing buying a house is actually why interest rates are raised so that like the housing market doesn't become so hot that everybody's buying houses the demand goes up and prices of houses like triple quadruple whatever um I just realized I'm, how fast I'm talking. Sorry. Um, no, well, I mean, but, you seem pretty passionate. Yeah. Like, well, well, we're gonna finish it up anyway. Yeah, yeah, so we're gonna yeah. wrap it up soon. But, yeah. But that's like kind of the interest rates <laughs> kind of doing doing their thing. Yeah. But um, um, generally speaking, like I said, I, you know, investing is like the number one way you mm -hmm. can you can do it. And if you hopefully that you know anybody who's watching this um can mm -hmm. you know take the lessons of the of the car wash and like apply it and and get mm -hmm. interested, get their foot wet with investing. Yeah. Um, and not not you know like you know not think about it not don't take the prices to heart think about them as businesses yeah and over time you know hopefully it can lead to people being like financially well off so. honestly that even just from that conversation i definitely learned a lot because i i think i told you before that you know i was thinking about like owning a house you mm -hmm. know like i like you know what i mean yeah. that's just like my preference but at the same time too i was also aware of the fact like it's hard to own like a home nowadays yeah. you know what i mean that's yeah. why like i wanted to hear your take on it too and like because you're very financially savvy as your own especially like you were you know starting it from like as a as, as a teenager you mm -hmm. know what i mean and then being able to utilize that that and being able to to get that knowledge and that experience mm -hmm. and knowing like okay this versus this which is like the better route to doing things yeah you know, it gives me more like an open minded thought. And that's why I'm actually glad that you're being, you know, being able to have you on the show helps me a lot, you know, yeah. to help others too yeah. with, you know, financial and long term like stability. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's one of my goals. Like, you know, it's always yeah. nice to even just be talking to friends, just one on one, just like talking about the stuff. I'm yeah. usually pretty passionate about it. Yeah. I mean, we did a one on one. I mean, you already shared the viewers what you got yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. I, but to be honest, like, thank you for coming, by the yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> Honestly, like, you know, at least like for myself, you know, being able to take that that knowledge that you have and being able to like utilize that for like the long term it helped out a lot because honestly i agree with you too especially like maxing out like your 401k you know you, you know utilizing like you know open a business so that way you get like passive income those are like literally like long-term like directions especially like yeah. in the future you know what yeah, i mean yeah. and that's kind of like the direction where i'm trying to go to as well in because everyone has a different situation mm -hmm. with my situation with like the the properties that you know like my dad has and mm -hmm. then it's gonna be passed on to me like i want to take advantage of that you know yeah, what i mean sure, just yeah. to get that long you know to back yourself up if something that happens i got something you yeah. know what i mean yeah but going to it you know appreciate you coming on the show yeah, man thank yeah, you for coming you yes and thank you guys for watching dark roast stay tuned for episode 24 coming soon to next month i think it's gonna be next month Round table, round table. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you for coming, man. Thank you, thank you.